Hi all, welcome back to Beanie Composter. We're fast approaching summer and even with the hot bin at 60 degrees and me putting in a builder's bucket worth of waste every other day, I'm still having problems getting rid of all the waste. So I thought at this time of the year, it'd be good to do a video on knowing your garden and knowing how to manage it so you don't get a massive amount of waste waiting to go into the hot bin. As I've mentioned in a few videos before, we've changed a few things in the garden this year just because of like climate change and things. We just wanted to manage things a little bit differently. So springtime, we've ended up collecting quite a lot of waste already. So behind me, you'll see I've got three buckets and also grass trimmings and at the back there there's stuff I want to put through the shredder just to use as bulking agent but it did make me think how could I manage things better so I'm not accumulating so much waste so this is really what this video is about I'm going to take you around our garden show you some different things and how I think about the garden now I'm not an anorak and put it all on a spreadsheet, but you just manage it how you want. I just sort of go through my head when I look in the garden how it needs to be managed. So this is just to give you some ideas on how you can manage yours. Now I would imagine most of you that have got a hot bin or are thinking of getting a hot bin have got some sort of lawn. Whether that's big or small, you're going to still need to mow it. He's gone off in his Lamborghini again. <laughs> if only we were all so rich. <laughs> Here in Surrey, spring has been quite wet for a change, which has been, to be honest, really nice. Everything's looking nice and green. If you look at our lawn, it's probably looking the best it's looked at this time of year. At the moment, I'm cutting the lawn twice a week. And even that is too much for the hot bin to digest and for me to get rid of all that waste. So I cut this this week and already if I look at the lawn it could probably do with another trim. So what I'm trying to say is if you have got a lawn just and you know it's been wet, the lawn's growing really well, then it's a good idea if you can cut it every other day just to keep on top of it so you don't have lots of grass going into your hot bin while you're getting lots of other waste. I know that's not possible for everybody but if you are just you know if you've just got a small lawn like this it only takes you know 10-15 minutes to whip round it with the lawn mower so that is a possibility so you don't build up and accumulate loads of grass trimmings. As soon as the sunshine comes out, it seems like everyone's outside doing some weeding and tidying up their garden. And that's no different for us. You know, we had a wet spring and as soon as we got a nice bit of sort of weather come along, we were out trimming the borders, having a bit of a tidy up and literally we accumulated, you know, three, four, well, with Mrs. B probably six, seven buckets worth of weeds, you know, bits of grass, all sorts of stuff. And like I say, we dug around the borders as well, just to tidy those up, which, you know, it's unbelievable how much they grow over the winter time. But it brings me on to sort of weeding. Now, as I say, we've changed a few things in the garden. We've tried to compact the borders now, so they're like, a lot more is in there and we're not having to weed as much and get so many weeds in there but you'll still get bits like this so poppies that just you know we've got bunches of them here now for me that's a weed mrs b will probably tell you different but i know these poppies grow quite big and if we leave all those yeah, we're going to get a few nice flowers probably for one or two days but we're going to have massive weeds up here and it's good to know what 
you want in your garden and what you don't because if you leave things for too long you could just end up with buckets full of weeds so if you are going to sort of trim stuff down take them when they're young so your hot bin can manage them quicker this video is about knowing your garden and how to manage things and there's no better example than this lovely apple tree behind us that is you know this was actually a patio container apple tree but look at the size of it now unbelievable but in springtime we noticed it was just absolutely covered in blossom and I think Mrs B is going to show you some pictures in the corner of how that looked like but it was spectacular and most of you that know a lot about gardening will know that especially apple trees one year they give you absolutely jack you know what and then the next year they're just packed to the rafters and you've got so many apples that it just you just don't know what to do with it all and last year like I say we had nothing on this apple tree but the previous year we did we had a lot of apples again and I think we just left it a little bit too late before Mrs B was taking off like thinning it out and we ended up with quite a few bucket loads of little apples that also accumulated in the shed and was just quite took quite a long time to get rid of as you all probably know uh, the flowers become fruit the tree kind of knows when it has too many of them so naturally it drops the flowers uh, just on the floor but still I think there is too many left on the branches well in our tree there is because it, it produces absolute tons and tons but if you have a look closely here we've got five sometimes six sometimes four tiny fruitlets in like one bud and if they all turn into apples you're going to have six very little apples so it's not very enjoyable it would be better to have one big lovely fruit rather than six very tiny ones so it's better for you it's probably better for the tree <clears throat> well definitely better for the hot bin if you don't if you don't have so many so what i tend to do when they grow a little bit more and i know they will stay on the branch they won't be dropped naturally by the tree what i do i thin them out so i leave uh, one or two apples the most on the cluster i know monty don't always says leave one but sometimes i don't have a heart and i leave two of them but they still produce nice ones if you can see any of them already attacked by any bugs by any sort of disease cut them out because you're still gonna have a lot so at the end we're going to end up with beautiful fruit healthy ones and the big ones um and uh, bin is not mad at me because he only has when i thin them out um early enough he only have maybe one or two buckets of very little fruitlets so he can get rid of them quite easily in the hot bin unlike the apple tree the rambling rose behind us you just know year on year it's going to produce stuff for your hot bin some of it you can use as bulking agent if the branches get too big and they're quite woody but it is best if you can keep on top of it so you get the bits like this that are quite soft and are easily manageable in your hot bin but as I say this is another thing that you know you're going to have to keep on top of quite a lot and that's going to produce you quite a lot of waste for your hot bin in the front garden we've got another three climbing roses and they're starting to get quite big now we'll show you the other one right around the corner but as you can see already they're packed with blooms and as they sort of come out of course it's very pretty but once they start dying you're going to need to deadhead these if you don't, don't want to get loads of rose hips 
So my advice with deadheading would be, as you walk through your garden on a daily basis, just take your secateurs with you and just cut them off as you go, rather than leaving it to maybe just a weekend where you go for it like a bull in a china shop and just deadhead everything and accumulate buckets of dead flowers that are going to be difficult to get rid of in your hot bin and you're going to have to store them. If you want five minutes of peace and quiet from your family or from whatever and you want to distract yourself, there's nothing better than go to the garden and look for some flowers you need to deadhead. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great excuse to meet your neighbours as well, have a little chat, it's really nice. Oh, it sure smells nice. Yeah, so that's what I do. And then I don't have uh, telling off that I came in the weekend and I produced buckets and buckets. So that's, that's just a better way and easier life. Just a few flowers in the bucket. Vinny's happy, he would not probably even see them. So, uh, better for the compost as well. In a minute, I'm gonna show you the wild meadow. The great thing about it is every single year is different. Last year, we had tons of daisies. This year, the buttercups at the moment are the kings and queens. Um, uh, and th the beauty of it is it's for the wildlife, it's for the nature. So you, we don't manage this one until late summertime when we cut it back quite short but that's only when the seeds are shed naturally but this is producing quite a bit isn't it at the end of the season um, but you've got peace and quiet with the meadow for the whole summer basically as i said at the beginning of the video we trimmed all the borders back in the early spring and you know, we, we had quite a lot of the wild meadow going into the border and it just gave us a hell of a lot of waste for the hot bin, which you can see I'm still trying to get rid of at the moment. But this is what this video is basically trying to say is if you can keep on top of stuff, then you're going to have less waste going into your hot bin. And if we look at the side of this border along here, we've got what I would say is quite a few weeds coming up and so we've got daisies here that shouldn't really be there so pulling them up before they get really massive is just going to help you out and while we're on this part i'll just bring you to the hedge now every year we let this go into blossom and then we trim it afterwards so for the hot bin that's actually not too bad a thing because I use that mainly as bulking agent and as we've got the shredder now that's going to be a piece of cake. So behind us we've got the red robin that is definitely going to need a trim this year because it's swallowing up the path as we come into the house like nobody's business and if you don't keep on top of that as well you're just going to end up with so much waste that unless you probably you know keep it for a whole year you're gonna be struggling to get rid of that in the hot bin so with bushes and small trees then I would say if you keep them trimmed as, as much as possible then that prevents you having so much you know coming and trimming them so much that you've got just tons of waste that you can't get rid of and you've just got to keep storing it if you have some unused part of the garden or you're new to gardening or you've got, or you've got too much waste, uh, maybe you want something low maintenance, so why not making yourself a little rockery? Um, rockery is very easy to manage. Uh, the alpines are small plants, they just cover your ground, they give you some lovely flowers and they don't give you lots of waste, if any. Um, so this little part uh, in front of the house was full of weeds. Uh, we just dug it up, uh, put some gravel mixed with the soil a little bit and put the alpines and they just grow for you. Uh, it's very easy, very pretty and as I said, not much waste produced 
from them at all. Another part of the garden that we've changed is we had a water lily and I wanted to do something where we could have it in a bigger container and just use it as a little bit of a feature. So we've built a, a very small rockery part at the corner here at the back and I think like Mrs B says all these smaller plants are not actually causing you a lot of waste for your hot bin so things like this really if you have got a garden that is producing lots of waste in some areas you can reduce that by having different planting in other areas that will reduce the waste that is going into your hot bin so definitely choosing plants for your garden knowing how they grow how big they grow is all going to help you when you come to managing your hot bin this is the back of the garden where we've got the little pond that we've got a nice stock of frogs again in there some tadpoles which is really great especially for like slugs and that we've planted this part of the garden so it's actually quite low maintenance and there's not an awful lot we need to do here and we don't get a lot of wastage here for the hot bin on this part of the garden so that is definitely if you are looking at changing your garden or replanting it and you're thinking of getting a hot bin or you have a hot bin then that's things to think about what sort of planting you're going to put in your garden and how much waste that is going to produce so one success we had this year was with the I think it's a shuttlecock fern and it looked like it was almost dying we had like a lot of dead leaves on there from the previous year Mrs B came along with the old secretaires cut it off and it's looking amazing now so you'll get to see that but that actually makes me think also about what is going into your hot bin as in waste wise so although during the summer you've got a lot of stuff that I would say is wet waste so like deadheading sort of foliage stuff like that is quite wet when when you get to like the autumn winter you're gonna have a lot of waste and probably early spring you're gonna have a lot of waste that is is dry as well so then you know your fern leaves that are just all crimpled up and dry so that's another thing to consider when you are taking waste out of your garden try to mix a bit of wet and dried waste so your hot bin isn't just getting overfilled with wet waste if you've got a couple of raised beds where you do grow vegetables then that's another thing to think about when it comes to the hot bin when you're going to harvest those vegetables how much waste they're going to give you and also during the sort of growing period and then the dormancy period how you're going to manage things so if you have got raised beds and you're worried about getting lots of weeds at the end of the season then you can put like a big mulch over the top or just cardboard or tarpaulin something that's going to restrict the weeds from growing so when it comes to the spring your garden isn't just overflowing with weeds that can set seed and start spreading in your whole garden so if you have got a hot bin or you're thinking about getting a hot bin this video really has shown you that knowing how your garden behaves year upon year and sort of understanding what plants you plant and what plants you buy will really help you in managing your hot bin and if you haven't got a hot bin then understanding how your garden is, the size and what you've got stocked in it will also help you choose whether you need a small hot bin or a larger hot bin. Now I hope this video has helped some of you out. If you are new to the channel please subscribe, leave comments because it doesn't just help me out, it helps everybody out. And until next time, happy composting and enjoy.